So let's break all of this down with our Washington correspondent, Paul Hunter, and Georgia State University assistant law professor, Karen Morrison, who was also a former assistant U.S. attorney. So, Karen, if we can begin with you, a lot of this can make you kind of dizzy trying to catch up with the details. And Donald Trump is already facing criminal charges for election interference federally. So some might be wondering, why go after him at a state level, too? So I'm, I think you have to sort of bear in mind that you're dealing with two separate sovereigns, two separate systems of government. Um, if he's violated federal law, that's um, an issue for the Department of Justice and for federal prosecutors to go after. But um, he's also broken the state law in Georgia. And in order to vindicate the rights of the Georgians and the Georgian voters, um, the, the case needs to be brought here because the state has a different interest in prosecuting this case, this particular case, than um, the, 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 the Department of Justice. I suppose the message in that is, is that if they don't uh, attempt to prosecute, then the signal to the next person who may a attempt to interfere with an election is, is go for it. Yeah, which is absolutely not <laughs> what, what, what anybody wants. I mean, no, this, we don't want to descend into chaos. And when people discuss the rule of law and how, you know, um, the law needs to be applied without fear or favor, that's, we're sort of at the, the nitty gritty of what that's kind of about. It's, does it really apply to everybody, even up to a former president? And, you know, I think the answer, at least in, um, from Fannie Willis in Fulton County, is yes, it applies to all. And on the, the matter of, of racketeering, this RICO charge, from what I gather, those trials can get very lengthy, complicated. So what's the advantage of going that route? I think the advantage of going that route is that it enables the prosecutor to tell a much broader story. It enables them to... It's, RICO is a good way of dealing with complex cases with a lot of interlocking people who are connected in some way, as well as um, a, a number of different acts, which might seem disparate, but um, all together form a type of pattern. So when there's a lot of moving parts, RICO is a great way to go, um, simply from a prosecutorial standpoint. And so, Paul, if we step back here, we're now, I guess, at the fourth set of criminal charges for the former president. People are starting to use spreadsheets. I know you've seen them to figure out the charges. What effect does this appear to be having on either the Republican Party in particular or the whole American electorate? <laughs> Adrian, we've had this conversation before. <laughs> we've had it. This is the fourth time, as you know, mm -hmm. uh, in the last four months that we've been talking about this. And, and the answer is simple uh, and yet hard to fathom, and, and that is it probably will have no effect. You know, it's sort of like, remember in the, in the depths of COVID when it was still raging and there was kind of COVID fatigue came along. Well, the, the storm around Donald Trump is still raging and the threat to, uh, uh, you know, U.S. democracy is still raging, but there's a fatigue, right? A lot of people just say, okay, yeah, we know all this stuff. He, he did bad things. Uh, let's move on. So. That's not going to change anything. On top of that, you know, feelings about Donald Trump are effectively baked in, and they have been for years now. So, you know, because Trump has managed to portray himself throughout this process as the victim, as a martyr, as uh, somebody the Democrats are out to get, that the swamp is out to get, that everybody's out to get him, and the MAGA crowd with the red ball caps have come to believe that. This won't change that. It, the needle won't move a fraction. At least that's the expectation. So if, if they're at a position where he is far ahead in the polls, uh, ahead of his closest rival uh, for the Republican nomination, Ron DeSantis, what does it look like his opponents might be doing to use this indictment? Will they use it against him? Will they just... Uh, what are they going to do? <laughs> Good question. Because <laughs> nothing so far, really, nothing has stuck. Let's put it that way. And by the way, it sort of depends what you mean by opponents, because mm -hmm. it's safe to say still uh, that there's probably nobody Joe Biden would choose other than Donald Trump to run against, because he and other Democrats still think that's a, a winning gambit. The other opponents are the fellow uh, Republican candidates for the nomination. Uh, and aside from, you know, nuanced comments from DeSantis and Pence and Nikki Haley, 
uh, and except for the sort of hired gun that, that Chris Christie seems to be, it's been crickets, right? Mm -hmm. Because there is fear still to speak out against this guy uh, amongst the Republicans. We may find out next week uh, at the, there's a, the first Republican uh, candidates debate. Um, Donald Trump may be there. He hasn't said he will be. He may or may not be there. But regardless, the rest will be there. Given the news this week, right, the fourth in four months, uh, this is the chance for the others to say, he's not good for this country. I am, right? This is their chance. We'll see. Karen, uh, last thought to you. It's, it's a big question, unfortunately. What, wh how much is riding on this uh, clean judicial process being a clean judicial process for America's democracy? Well, I think if you take the allegations as true, or at least, you know, probable, um, I'd say everything pretty much is riding on, on the, maybe not on this specific prosecution, but on whether there is accountability for um, attempting to overturn an election. Because if there isn't, kind of as you pointed out, then when will, and when will we ever have a peaceful transfer of power again? It'll just be a game of, you know, you get elected, you hold on as long as you can until maybe the military ushers you out. Um, so I, I do think that we are at an, an important inflection point and, um, you know, it's the kind of thing that keeps us Americans up at night sometimes. I bet. All right. Uh, Karen and Paul, thank you both for being here tonight. We appreciate it. You're welcome. Thank you.